Hello and welcome. In our previous video, we were able to look at uh, the uh, configuration of the static files, uh, which uh, comprise of the uh, CSS uh, images and JavaScript. And we were able to also run the collect static command, uh, which created, uh, copied the file, the static files into the uh, static files folder, uh, which we defined in the, or we configured in the settings.py file. And additionally, we were able to point these scripts uh, towards uh, to the uh, local from the local environment, and uh, we were also able to load the static files on top of the uh, HTML page so that we can be able to use them. And uh, handling of static files by uh, Django alone is not uh, it's um, uh, at times not robust. And uh, we have other issues like caching and uh, compressing of these files and, you know, using of uh, possibly other storages. Like if you don't want uh, to have these files loading quickly, uh, because at times if you are using the file storage, which is a default, then we may have uh, some lagging of the site, among other things. So we are going to use a third party library that is called uh, white noise. And uh, it comes in handy, especially in a production environment like Heroku, if you want to deploy it in Heroku or some other uh, platform as a service. Uh, so we can be able to make use of it in handling of the static files. So we will uh, begin by installing this uh, white noise and uh, open the cheese shop to be able to see the white noise version that I have here. And I'm going to, first of all, confirm that my Docker containers are up and running and indeed they are so we are so i'm going to install the django white noise inside the container the web container and the docker compose exec container name is called web and uh, we will have install it using pipenv yeah so i'll have these uh, install this command install white noise inside the container. So let's give it some few seconds and so, so that it can install. So it has uh, completed installing the, the third party library successfully. The next step will be stopping our containers and, and uh, rebuilding the containers so that you can be able to pick up the Django white noise. So I'll start them in a detached mode and do perform a build. Yeah, so it has, uh, com we have completed building our, our containers and let's confirm that they are running. Okay, so we can proceed with the next step, which is to add the configurations for the white noise. I'm going to make reference to the documentation. So after installing inside the middleware, we have various middlewares and among them, the first one, I believe it should be security middleware. So we are going to add below, below it the white noise uh, middleware. Uh, let's find our, where the middleware is. Yeah, we have this security middleware, which is our first. So we'll add the white noise middleware, and I'm going to put it inside single quotes. Uh, okay. And then the other item is that uh, inside the just the Django has these static files. Uh, that yeah, we are using as the default uh, application for handling the static files or framework. So we are going to add white noise uh, app inside this, and I believe it should be still somewhere in this documentation. Uh, white noise uh, dot storage to enable us to sorry, not storage, but run server, uh, underscore no static, then we add a comma the end. Uh, let me see if I can be able to confirm this because I don't want to have any errors. Yeah, here it is. So we have this voice noise, run server, no static. I think it's more or less the same as what we have added here. Okay, so we have that, and uh, the other thing we are going to do is uh, we are going to look for 
uh, we have the static file storage that we had. Uh, I'm not sure if we had set it. Yeah, we had not set it. So this static file so storage, it tells the server, if it's Heroku or uh, the Amazon S3 bucket or whatever platform that you are using in production, it tells it uh, which uh, storage method to use. And we have the white, uh, white noise compression something storage. We have this, so I'm just going to copy it. Uh, this one enables the compression and caching of your files. So it uh, kind of improves the performance of the website. Uh, so if you reload your website, it does not have to always load the images. It kind of creates like a cache. Uh, but we're not going to go into the details. Uh, so we have this. For consistency, I'm going to put it under single quotes. And uh, there we have our storage. And uh, the next step now will be running the collect static. We'll run it inside Docker container. Docker compose the web Python manage py collect static. So whenever you you probably add this or push this uh, project in a like Heroku, then uh, it will be able to update or it will be able to leverage on uh, white noise. Now we seem to have an issue. Okay, it seems like our container has stopped. I don't know why. Could be some of my, some of my settings or not. Well, so I'll forgot to set it up in a detached mode. Uh, let me see whether it's running. Yeah, and then I can proceed with my collect static command. I'll just do yes. So it will take some seconds. Let's allow it to complete the uh, copying of the static files. And uh, in this case, we have changed this uh, from the, by default, it usually uses Django, I believe the Django storage. It should be somewhere in this uh, documentation. Yeah, we have the static files up here and all the, the, the meaning of this, uh, what the collect static does, and then it, also points to the storages. Yeah, we have these storages. So we have the manifest static storage, static file storage, what have you. So you can read, I'm going to share the link to this so that you can read the details on these static files and storages. So let's uh, quickly go back into our system and see it is still copying the static file. So we'll give it some few moments to complete doing what uh, doing its work you can see that we have encountered an error which is saying that post-processing of uh, bootstrap a minified bootstrap javascript failed and uh, the error is comp uh, it's actually complaining that it is missing this map uh, dot map file so i think we can go into our bootstrap uh, bootstrap and then we can be able to See if you can be able to download to download it. Uh, yeah, I'll download this compiled CSS and uh, JavaScript files. Yeah, so we are going to copy the, there's also this bundle uh, that is, I think, referenced in the documentation, but that you can use, uh, but we'll just stick to whatever we, whatever is required. So we have the bootstrap uh, minified map file. And I'll actually copy these two in place of this. Okay. So I'll just uh, 
do a delete I'll uncheck this because it keep on disturbing me yeah, so we have the bootstrap minified map file just going to copy it there Yeah, and if you notice, it has kind of bundled them together. So uh, that said, we can rerun our collect static and see what happens. So it asks us if we want to replace this file. So just say yes for now, and we'll give it some. And uh, and then we'll give it some few moments so that it can copy the it can overwrite uh, those other files that are there. So we have another error. And I forgot to copy these uh, post processing. So I, I'm sure it is asking for the map file for the popper uh, JS. So I'm just going to open the. I'm sure if we have that popper file here. Uh, according to the Bootstrap documentation, I believe that we have the bundle file. Uh, let me just go back to this reference. Yeah, it actually makes use of the bootstrap bundle file, which includes uh, the bundle file includes the three. Uh, it includes the popper and I think some other framework uh, that it normally comes uh, shipped with uh, bootstrap. Yeah, so to include bootstrap, CSS and JS, uh, it includes popper for dropdowns and tooltips. So we are going to make use of that uh, bootstrap dot bundle uh, dot js. So because I've downloaded it, I'm just going to copy the bundle uh, bootstrap dot bundle dot js in place of the other one, and I'm also going to copy its map file, which I frankly don't know what it does, but. So I'm also going to remove this map file. Going to remove the popper and uh, we'll make use of the bundle bundle file and its map company map. Yeah, so I've been able to copy these two files inside the JavaScript folder. So we'll make re we'll only make reference to the bundle.js file, and I'll remember to update this. So I'll remove this line that point that looks for this popper JavaScript. I'm going to make use of the bundle. Uh, yeah. So we have that file, and uh, we, are, we are now going to rerun the collect static. And to save on time, I won't, I will not overwrite. So it won't copy. So let me just uh, click overwrite so that it can copy those files. Uh, so it may take some time i believe it's because of the files that are associated with the ck editor uh, i think that there, there could be very many so we'll give it some few moments to complete and then we can uh, end our tutorial okay so it has copied the two files uh, and now uh, we have been able to to install the white, uh, white noise park uh, white noise third party library and uh, further ado we've been able to uh, add it in the installed uh, files and uh, we've also been able to add the middleware for the white noise and uh, we have also been able to configure the static file storage and uh, in the next tutorial we are going to see how we can incorporate the image files or the user uploaded uh, files uh, most uh, in this case we are going to be working with images uh, but the uploaded files can include other, other things like PDFs and, and the like. So uh, we, we will also be able to add a header into our blog posts. Uh, but first, we need to set up the media files uh, to configure the media files uh, in our, our website. So if you like this video, uh, 
you can uh, feel free to uh, click on the thumbs up button and uh, you can also be able to subscribe to my channel uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, don't forget to click the bell icon so that whenever we uh, upload a new video content you can be able to get a notification uh, thank you for watching